This edition of The Best Times focuses on making our homes age-friendly by using universal design concepts to keep us in our houses longer. We'll answer the basic questions about Alzheimer's disease, which affects over 5 million Americans. And we'll tell you how thousands of people in the Mid-South are missing out on Medicare savings programs. Hello, I'm Chris Hardaway. Welcome to the March edition of The Best Times, a series that looks at life after 50. Do you know what this is? It's a grab bar. You've seen the institutional version of this in public restrooms, where they're mandated by the Americans with Disabilities Act. They help people with disabilities or infirmities access the facilities. This bar has the same functionality as its institutional cousin, but it's more attractive because it's designed for use in private homes. The concept that this hardware represents is called universal design, making spaces that are accessible to people of all ages. A 2004 AARP study revealed that 84% of respondents wanted to stay in their homes for as long as possible. The current economic recession is forcing people to rethink the notion of retiring to Sun City. As the 78 million baby boomers get older, all of America may begin to resemble Sun City. But are our houses age-friendly? And are we ready for a future where Americans are aging in place? Aging in place actually means where you can stay in your home for as long as possible, as independent as possible. Leslie Shankman Cohen is an interior designer and a certified aging in place specialist. She's a proponent of the universal design concept that began in the mid 80s. Universal design is designed for everyone regardless of age or as I like to call it ability. Um, it works for anyone whether you are 80 years old or whether you're young and have a small child. So it is a, a house that works for you, not you working around your house. Universal design and its companion concept, visitability, are marked by three core architectural conditions. At least one zero-step entrance into the house, doorways with a minimum clearance of 32 inches, and at least a half bath on the main floor. This grab bar is an example of many low-cost or no-cost design elements that make aging in place easier. There's a whole litany of things that you can do, but the basics are wider hallways, wider doors, uh, thresholdless roll-in showers, just easy access. It's a lot of common sense, quite frankly. You don't want to have lots of rugs or lots of area rugs. You don't want to have lots of furniture and lots of what we call this big design term called frou-frou. You don't want a lot of frou-frou in the house uh, because it just makes sense. It's easier to maneuver. As with any building project, cost can be an issue. Pat Mahoney is a builder and remodeler so it's, with an aging in place certification. If you did something incorporated from the very beginning of a job, it don't, might cost 5% more or 10%. So it's not really that much. If you're building new and you incorporate universal design, there's usually not much of a cost increase. But if you're coming back to remodel, then of course you do have those increase in costs. Surprisingly, cost isn't the biggest roadblock preventing people from accepting universal design modifications. In most cases, it's denial. I just did a great master bath uh, redo for a couple that were in their 60s. And I noticed uh, a couple of things that I suggested that we might want to consider changing. They said, nah, it's, it's not a problem. Well, I asked them, you know, how long are you gonna be in this house? And they said, I think this is gonna be about it. And the, the bathroom turned out beautifully, but there are a few things in there that I would have liked to have done that they just more or less said, nah, we, we're not interested in that. A big part of my job is educating the public, letting people know what's available, why they need it, 
how to incorporate it, and then all of a sudden they're asking for it. Just as green design started off, no one knew what it was, and now everyone's asking for green design principles, I see that people will be asking for aging in place and universal design as the education gets out there. I don't think the people are afraid of paying for it. They just don't want to, they don't want their house to, to feel like a nursing home. They don't want their, their bathroom to look like a, uh, a truck stop bathroom, you know, with, with the grab bars. And, and I don't blame them, but, but it, it truly is, uh, you're going to have to work around a, uh, a, a bit of denial and a, a bit of you can, uh, you can still do it and make it pretty. The application of universal design concepts is still relatively new. The National Association of Home Builders surveyed remodeling companies in 2007 and reported that 72% of respondents had made aging in place modifications to existing homes. That total was 15% higher than just one year before. This is what Judy Bookman's kitchen looked like a year ago. This is what it looks like today after Leslie Shankman Cohen redesigned the space using universal design concepts to fit Judy's needs. You see, Judy loves to cook, but at four feet six inches tall, her old kitchen just didn't fit. When Leslie mentioned that she wanted to have enough clearance beneath the counters for there to be access in case I ever had to be in a wheelchair, you know, I, I probably audibly gasped as in, oh, that could never happen and why would I still be here then? But the reality is, you know, it, it, it will adapt to that if, if it ever comes to that, but I will still have at least some degree of independence to come in here and do the things that I not only need to do, but that I really love doing in the kitchen. Normal cabinets are 34 inches high, we, base cabinets. We lowered those cabinets to approximately 32 inches, and then I took the upper cabinets and lowered those proportionately, so it's not out of proportion looks-wise for her to use. It also makes it easier for her to get to. And within those upper cabinets, there's, um, we retrofitted those with pull-outs so she can reach up and pull the entire contents of the cabinet down to her level. I designed and put in some pull-out platforms which she can access with her foot. It has a kickstand on it and she can pull those out, stand on it, holds 300 pounds, and she can stand up and cook and see inside of her pots or have easier access to her countertops. Every cabinet has a pull-out, roll-out shelf to it. Gives her easy access to things in the back. And then we have drawers with the uh, dishes at a lower level so that she can reach dishes and isn't having to put things higher above her head. So it's a wonderful kitchen and you could walk in and use it tomorrow and not notice anything different and yet she is still be able to use every aspect of the kitchen. Not only are the modifications to Judy's kitchen nearly invisible, the cost to install them during the remodel was nearly negligible. But more importantly, the modifications will enable Judy to remain in her house for as long as possible. That fact can have larger implications for America's aging baby boomers. I think that um, the baby boomers are going to uh, force the issue, if you will. I believe that universal design is going to become uh, more accepted. First of all, the way that the demographics are, we're going to have a lot of multi-generational housing. So we're going to have mom and dad, we're going to have the homeowner, we're going to have the children, we're going to have the stepchildren, we're going to have grandchildren, all living within the same house. So we have to have those houses universally designed for all of those demographics within one confine of a building. I think the government's going to figure out that it's cheaper for people to live in their homes than for them to live in an institution. Government's going to give incentives for you to retrofit your house, for you to install certain things, for you to keep um, your grandmother or your aged parent or whomever in your house instead of sending them to a nursing home and having them on Medicare, Medicaid. I see a bright future, but it's going to take a little bit of time to get it implemented. Judy Bookman is in the forefront of the Aging in Place movement. In 2008, only about 4% of people 65 and older moved to a new locale when they retired. For most people, there's no place like home. I do love this kitchen. Every day when I come in to make my tea in the morning, I'm happy.
and I never take it for granted.